Hey, at least one of my teams is doing well right now. What is up, Finn fans? Yes, I am wearing my Mets jersey because I am recording this on Thursday night. And just recently, the Mets beat the Brewers to advance to facing the Phillies and the NLDS. Yes. So I'm going to wear, yeah, I'm wearing my Dolphins, but I'm also going to wear my Mets. Mike Piazza, shout out Mike Piazza, because let's go Mets, man. And I know I have some, you know, you, you guys that aren't Met fans, but hey, uh, felt good to win a playoff game. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But we're going to talk about this Patriots game. <clears throat> they lose this game. <laughs> I'm going to beat around the bush. Let's jump into this. Let's look at the injury report. We're going to start with... The Patriots injury report, and as you can see here, it is a doozy for them. Half my face is covered, so I'm going to scoot. Now, they did not practice. Again, I'm recording this Thursday. They have two uh, days of did not practice for four players. David Andrews, their starting center, and he's probably going to be out. Kyle Duggar, their safety, he's probably going to be out. Wide receiver K.J. Osborne, shoulder injury, he probably will be out. And tackle Caden Wallace now. Might be their starter, but he's also probably going to be out. And then they have a lot of limited, whether it's Kendrick Bourne with the knee, Jennings with the shoulder, Jonathan Jones with the shoulder, Marcus Jones popped up with a groin. You have their guard and their backup center uh, with ankle problems. They also got low, their tackle, and then two of their safeties and Jabril Pat. Like they're a banged up team banged up team with all the injuries they have. And this is something that the Miami Dolphins need to take advantage of. So we'll get into that, obviously, when I talk about it. And then we have the Miami Dolphins over here. Unfortunately, as you guys know, uh, Jalen Phillips uh, hurt his knee. Um, initially, he hurt his knee with uh, Jordan Poyer trying to make a tackle and diving at him and hitting him in the knee. Then he came out. They put a knee br brace on him. He went back in and non-contact. He was doing a stunt. Boom. Hurt his knee. He's out for the rest of the year, which really sucks because you guys know I am a big Jalen Phillips fan. But the fact that he keeps getting hurt, I don't know. He will be on the team next year. They have they picked up his fifth year option. But outside of that, he needs to stay healthy all of next year and he needs to ball out. If not, I don't know if it happens. But I will say this. I will say this. You see. Kendall Fuller, you see Cam Smith, you see Odell Beckham Jr., and you see Teron Armstead, full participants. Yes, Odell and Cam Smith, full participants. So I could take our injury report and technically do this, which is fantastic. Cuts it down. Did not practice Jordan Poyer dealing with a shin injury. He probably won't play, so it'll probably be Javon Harlan and Marcus May back there. But Braxton Berrios... David Long Jr., Raheem Mostert, uh, Duke Riley, uh, Skylar Thompson, and Malik Washington were all limited, but hopefully they are good to go, especially Raheem Mo Mostert and David Long. I'd love to see them come back and really help us out. Emmanuel Ogbo was a rest and then limited, so again, it's more of a rest for him, uh, but we're this is pretty decently healthy uh, outside of losing Phillips. We are getting Fuller back. We are getting Armstead back. We are going to get Beckham and Cam Smith are probably going to come off of the pup and IR. So big, 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 big for the Miami Dolphins. And I will talk more about that later. Then we will look at the breakdown. But just so you guys know, I make this this that you see here. I make this. I go on there and I cut it up and I put it together. So, because if not, it's like offense, offense, defense, defense. I make it so it looks like our offense versus their defense and rankings. So, be nice to me. <laughs> But you see here, we have the Miami Dolphins. Total offense is ranked 26th, not surprised. Passing offense is ranked 23rd, not surprising. Rushing offense is ranked 24th, not surprising. Our scoring offense is dead last, not surprising. Sacks allowed, 22nd. We actually don't give up a lot of sacks, nor a lot of pressure, which is interesting. Third down offense is 25th, not surprising. Giveaways, 10th. 
four giveaways. Then you flip it over, you look at their defense. Defense, total defense, 24th ranked, not great. Their passing defense, 28th ranked, not great. If Tua was quarterbacking, and I know people are like, Tua sucked, David Tua's going to be pay He knows the offense. He can run it better. I think if he was uh, playing, I think we would torch their defense. Also, Patriots have never beaten him. Their rushing defense is ninth. That's something we should look at and be worried about. Their scoring defense is 17th, sacks 18th, which kind of coincides with our sacks allowed, which is not bad. Uh, trade down, which actually, no. Now that I think about it, being 22nd and sacks allowed is bad. Don't listen to me. Third down defense, 31st. That should help us, even though our third down uh, offense is doo doo butter and their takeaways is 14th only with four. And then when we flip it around, our defense versus their offense, our defense is actually pretty decent. Total defense, six. Passing defense, fifth. Rushing defense, 16th. Scoring defense, 26. But I, if you, with your eyes, again, these are stats that you're just reading off. But if you actually watched <clears throat> all four of our games and come to the conclusion that you look at the score and you're like, oh, wow, we gave up 31 points. We gave up 20-something points. We suck. We suck. You're not watching the game and you're not seeing the hole that the offense is putting us in by going for it on fourth downs on our own side of the field. And we're holding them to field goals in those instances. Sacks 26, that needs to go up. I don't know how much more it's going to go up with Jalen Phillips being out. <clears throat> Number one, we are number one in third down defense, which is fantastic. Takeaways 14th. We want to see a little bit more of that. You flip it over, look at the Patriots. Their offense is not good. Dead last in total offense. Dead last in passing. Not bad in rushing, but again, maybe with David Long back, that'll help. Dead almost second to last in scoring. Second to last in sacks allowed. 17 sacks. 24th in third down. And 10th in giveaways. Got to take advantage of this stuff, man. You got to take advantage of this stuff. Then we will do what I always talk about doing. PFFF. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Should I make a theme song for when I switch over to the PFF chart? PFFF. So we're going to look at the Dolphins offense versus their defense. Hopefully over here, this is Toronto Armstead, but I think Patrick Paul did pretty well. Jones and Eichenberg and Jackson did horribly last week. John U. Smith is always, a, he's always disappeared. Hopefully this is Odell Beckham. Maybe it's not. We'll probably find out more today or tomorrow if he is out or in. We need Waddle and Hill to do their thing. But again, Hill, I showed you guys in the film breakdown, Huntley missed three potential touchdowns with him with his inaccuracy. Huntley is going to be the starter. We'll see how that pans out. A-Chan didn't have a great game, but he also went up against a very good defensive front. And then you look at their defense. You got Peppers. Again, is he going to play? Nope. I think Peppers is playing. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Is Peppers? No, Peppers is limited. But Duggar is the one who's probably not going to play. Back to PFFFF. So Duggar might not be in there. Peppers is limited. Uh, you got their both of their corners limited. Gonzalez is probably going to be covering Tyreek the whole time. So you got to feed Jalen Waddle. Their defensive line is meh. It's not great. You can run on it. You can do what you need to do. Their secondary is where it's the problem, especially their middle linebackers in McMillan. We should know who he is and Tavy Tavai. So we, again, if we, our offense was anything, even a quarter, even half of what it was last year, I would feel so confident going in this game, but it's not. So I don't. Then we flip it over. Um, you got Brooks and Walker. A Poyer's not going to be in there, so it's probably going to be Marcus May. I wish I could change those out. That would have been fantastic. Ramsey's doing fantastic. Duck, eh, he's an undrafted free agent, but there's some plays where I'm like, come on, Duck. Kater Kohu, dead last. God, he needs to do much better. I am happy with the front, our defensive front, especially Calais Campbell, who's had so many tackles for loss and should definitely feast off of a very decimated offensive line of the New England Patriots. Same thing with Sealer, same thing with Emmanuel Ogba. And Chop needs to get a sack today, today, Sunday, needs to. Then you look at their side of the field. Hey, that's my name. Um, 
got a ton of injuries here. You got Brissett. Stevenson is where you need to focus. But again, their offensive line is not good. And I would put Brooks on Henry all day, every day. Our defense matches up against their offense very well. It's This is where I'm worried. This. Ken Huntley now being on the team for three weeks, getting another week to work with Waddle and Hill get his jitters out and actually make the throws he needs to to help us win because if not god help us all so that is your uh pff now we go into the five things that dolphins need to do if they want to beat the new england patriots in new england and most of them are the same i was so i go into the to my little my little system that i use and i change one two three four five to make the new adjustments and they're kind of the same because it's not that the teams we faced are not that good so to beat them it's a lot of fundamental football that we tend to not stick to number one on the list stop the <laughs> stop the run i don't know why i uh, whatever you gotta stop the run to me their offense is Stevenson, you stop Stevenson, you make Brissett throw, you make him have to stand in that pocket, especially with their bad offensive line. We will feast off of them and hopefully cause sacks, strip sacks, turnovers. You need to stop the run, make him one-dimensional. Now, we did that, and again, this is what drives me nuts. The defense sucks, Doug. We did that for like two and a half, almost three full quarters on Monday. It wasn't until the end of the third quarter that they had that 40 something yard run up until there. We were shutting down their run. We were shutting down their pass. They had 244 total yards. Their quarterback had like 85 yard passing. They were doing their job. So do it again. You just shut down their run and you force them to pass. You force Brissett to do something. We know how he plays. He takes a beat to get the ball out. That's where you can get the sacks. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Wait, I have two stop the runs. The first one was supposed to be run the ball. So I'm going to change number two to run the ball i messed up i apologize we got to run the ball if we're stopping the run we got to run the ball they have the ninth rushing defense which sucks their passing defense is not good we can take advantage of that if i felt more comfortable with the quarterback in the helm we got to run the ball we have to feed hopefully Mostert's playing if Mostert's playing i'll feel better because he's a little bit more of a vet and we'll be able to burn off these chunk yardage and then we can have that tandem of intermingling the guys and also have the position where we have most back there we have a chan lined up but we got to run the ball you can't put it all in huntley's hand and you have to be able to control the clock we had 25 minutes on monday they had 35 minutes that just should be the opposite way got to run the ball got to eat the clock up and got to make their defense tired and we got to score some flipping points man only team in the nfl that is not led all season come on number three sack percent you gotta sack jacoby percent i think we had like two sacks two or three sacks last week or this week monday against a not good offensive line get after him man Last week against this, the 49ers, six sacks against the Jets, seven sacks against Seattle, three sacks against Brissett. Get after him. Their starting center is hurt. He's not going to be playing. Their backup center is banged up. Their whole offensive line is hurt, banged up, and licking their wounds. This is when you have to feast on them and sack Brissett over and over and over again. Like I said, I want to see Chop Robinson get his sack. I would love for Chop Robinson to go off in this game. I would love for Mo Kamara to be activated for this game, especially because Chandler Phillips is on the IR. Get after him. Just pin your ears back, push these guys out of your way, and get after him. Just get and sack him. Bring him down. Sick of it. Such high pressure rates, but you can't finish the job. Finish the flipping job. Number four, this didn't change. Literally, this didn't change from last week. Because for the love of God, make the adjustments. I honestly think if Mike McDaniel would have went with Tim Boyle in the second half, and again, it's not a knock on Huntley. He just wasn't ready. But there was very 
easy passes that we could have got scores off of if he just made the throw. And I think Tim Boyle would have made those throws. Am I saying Tim Boyle's this be all end all? Am I saying he's better than Huntley? No, I just needed the quarterback to make the throws. And I thought Tim Boyle can make these throws. He should come in the second half. Also, why are you running out of fourth and one at a shotgun? Why are you doing an end around on fourth and one? Make the adjustments. Stop doing it. All week, you're talking about, we need to look at ourselves. Our offense stinks. We're going to make adjustments depending on this, this, and that. This is the game. This is the, They do not have a good passing defense. This is the game to make those adjustments. So make the flipping adjustments, Mike, for the love of everything holy. And finally, better quarterback play. Again, I'm not knocking Huntley. He was with the team for like two weeks. He got thrusted into the starting position, even though I don't think he should have started, even though I wanted him to start. And I made a whole video about it. But after watching him play for a half, I was like, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. His intangibles of his speed and his legs are not worth him missing open passes to Tyreek Hill. I was dead wrong. See, you can own up to being wrong. But we need better quarterback play. That post... Not even post that cor deep corner, Tyreek Hill. It should have been a touchdown. The go on the left side should have been a touchdown. The go from in the slot should have been a touchdown. The crosser where he threw to Jalen Waddle instead of throwing the crossing route or the drag to Tyreek Hill should have been the first down. There were so many plays that it just was fundamental football stuff because he hasn't been with us long enough and he isn't used to these receivers that they should have went with Tim Boyle, who we've had for four weeks versus two. But he's starting. <clears throat> so hopefully Mike McDaniel, number four, made the adjustments. Hopefully Tyler Huntley understands it and can come out and do his thing. We need better quarterback play. Because if we have better quarterback play against the Seattle Seahawks, Skylar Thompson, and better quarterback play against the Tennessee Titans, I honestly think we would have won those two games and we'd be sitting here three and one tied for first place. No, in second place <clears throat> because the Bills beat us. That's where we would be right now, but we're not because <clears throat> we don't have viable backup quarterbacks. So we need better quarterback play. So, hey, Doug, who are you picking? Who am I picking? This game is, they lose this game. Like I would love to be 500, three and three with Tua coming back against the Cardinals at home. That I, I would be shocked if Tua doesn't come back for that game against the Cardinals at home. For one, it's at home. And he probably could have played this game if he wasn't put on IR. But again, they were just, you know, being cautious with him. This offense worries me. I have no faith in Mike McDaniel to make any adjustments. Him saying what he said in his presser about we got to look at ourselves. We got to look internally. We need to make changes, this and that. I, th I think he's just blowing smoke. I am, I'd rather be surprised than let down right now. And I am prove it, show me mentality right now. So I have no faith that Huntley is going to make the throws he needs to. I have no faith that this offensive line is going to be able to stop, you know, any of these defensive guys coming after us. I have no faith that the run game is going to... I have faith that the defense is going to stop the Patriots' offense. I do. But I think it's going to be another situation like the Seahawks game, the Bills game, and the uh, Titans game where the defense holds them and holds them and holds them and gives the offense so many opportunities after opportunities. And the offense either goes three and out or they kick field goals or they have a turnover or a fumble or a bad snap. And it's just one thing after another. And again, Mike McDaniel will sit there rolling his eyes and being frustrated instead of doing something. I, it, it's the offense, and I'm going to sound like John Madden, but they just need to score 21 points, and this defense can hold opposing teams to under 20 points, especially the bad teams like the Titans, the Patriots, and the Colts. Very, This Dolphin team could have very easily been 4-2 and two when Tua came back if we had a better offensive play. So what is my prediction? I am predicting, unfortunately, I like I said, I'm not I, I don't want to be let down anymore. I don't want to get my hopes up. 
and prove me wrong, rather be surprised and let down, you know, show me situation. I have the Patriots winning 2013. I think the Dolphins get a touchdown late, and I think they kick a bunch of field goals, but I think that the Dolphins' defense holds them as much as they can, but they score two touchdowns, kick two field goals, and I think they win. And I then probably will be calling for Mike McDaniel to be fired if they start uh, one and four or one and five when Tua comes back because this is just ridiculous. How do you go from having the best offense for two years in a row and now your offense can't do anything? And why is it why are you so dedicated and predicated and all this stuff to Tua that you can't make adjustments for other quarterbacks? So prove me wrong, Miami. Go out there, destroy the Patriots. Give me more hope. Give me a feeling that this uh, this season isn't over. This is the game to do it because the Patriots aren't good. The Colts aren't good. You could win these next two games and go back to three and three. And you have the Bills and the Jets who are facing hard teams. And if they lose those and we win ours, they very easily could still be out back in this thing. But I have no faith in our offense. So until proven otherwise, I am picking the Patriots to beat the Dolphins 20 to 13. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. I would love it. I said the same thing against Seattle. Prove me wrong, Skylar Thompson. And unfortunately, he didn't. Please prove me wrong, Miami. I am begging you from my knees. Make me look like a big, dumb idiot and destroy the Patriots. Don't make me look right. I really don't want to be right. But I will see you guys maybe tomorrow. I might have a video for you guys tomorrow, but I'll definitely see you guys Sunday, 1 o'clock. But like usual, stay classy. Have fun talk.